Hello and welcome everyone. In this video I will show how I've made the California Desert Bases for your miniatures. California has to be one of my favorite places to go on holiday to. I've driven a few times from Los Angeles to Las Vegas and I think the landscape there is very beautiful and inspiring. So here we go. I start off with cutting out some pieces of this cork board I have here. This will be used as a base to create some rock faces. When they were cut out, I then broke off some bits from the sides to create some random shapes. Here I've only cut out three of them, but I actually made a lot of them in different sizes. I also use this blunt knife I have here to scrape the sides a bit more. So you'll end up with a lot of these leftover cork bits which you can save and use to fill up the bases later. In order to glue them to the bases I used some super glue. I decided using 540mm and 160mm Games Workshop base for this project. I've added some different size cork pieces on top of each other to create these random shapes of rock. At this stage I will try and cover up these lines that appear and using multiple layers of cork board. For this step you could use the small bits we had left over from earlier. However, I had these army painter small rocks laying around for some time and decided to use those. Here I covered the cork bases with some full strength PVA glue. I then added these army painter rocks to the bases and pressed them in place where I wanted them. When the glue is fully dry, you should end up with something looking like this. In order to cover up the rock faces, I mixed up some plaster. I recommend mixing up small amounts of this stuff, because it will dry very quickly. I then applied a thin layer of plaster to the cork bases. This will fill in the gaps and make them very solid. When the plaster had fully dried, I used this high-tech modeling tool to create some of these lines you see on sandstone sometimes. To create some dead trees, I use these dried branches I have here. I poked a hole in the base and then attached them using PVA glue. What I have here is the dead earth paste from Zitteres. It comes in two components. One being the primer that needs to be applied first. Here I applied the primer to some areas of the base. I only added this stuff to three of the bases for some variation. When the primer is dry, it will become transparent and you can now add the earth paste over it. After about an hour of drying time, the cracked earth looked like this. What I have here 
is a selection of sand and small rocks. I'd recommend checking for these at a dollar store as they usually sell them. And also notice the invisible sand I added to the top left of the tray. Next to the cracked earth I added some full strength PVA glue and then some sand and rocks going from coarse to fine. I've transferred some of this baking soda to this small shaker I have here. Not to be confused with icing sugar of course, though it would add more flavor. To create some raised areas of sand, I added some extra sand here and there. I then carefully applied two layers of this glue mixture to hold it in place. I figured no Californian desert is complete without having some Joshua trees, so I tried creating those as well. I start off by taking some thicker pieces of the dried branches, which I attach to each other using millet pot or green stuff. The trees were then attached to the base and sculpted a bit more at the bottom. When the potty had dried, I applied some PVA glue over it. So at this stage, I added some icing sugar, I mean baking soda, over the potty. These Joshua trees have a typical leafy texture at the tops. I applied some PVA glue, then used some of these pencil shavings I had left over my palm tree tutorial. Alright, so now we move on and try and make a few cacti, I believe it's pronounced. I'd say cactuses, but I've read somewhere it's actually cacti. Correct me if I'm wrong. I start off by using this floors wire I have here one being slightly thicker than the other. I took a piece of the thicker wire and twisted some of the thinner wire around it like this. So what I have here are some of these wooden beads I picked up at a dollar store. I will use these to make a solid frame for the gag tie. Depending on how many of these cactus shapes you prefer, you can add more wire to some areas. And while we're at it, I also made some of these smaller frames I will use for something else later on. When all the frames were done and glued solid, I mixed up some Milliput. I then applied a thin layer of this stuff over the frames. Afterwards, I used this sculpting tool to shape them a bit more. You can decide to make these typical grooves you see in a cactus sometimes, however I decided not to. To give them a bit more texture though, I decided it's baking soda time again. In order to show off my spray can skills, I used this spray adhesive here to cover the frames, but you could basically use PVA glue as well. 
then covered them in the baking soda. This time without the shaker though. When the glue had dried, I had thought of this terrible idea to make some spikes on them. I used this type of plastic plant to do this. I then cut these microscopic leaves from these plants to use as needles. Here I apply a layer of PVA glue, one side at a time. When this was done, I added the needles to the cacti, which went pretty fast. Three weeks later. So I will now try and create another desert plant I thought was interesting. I first applied a layer of millipod to the smaller frames I made earlier. When this was done and the potty still soft, I cut out some spiky shapes of the plastic blister I have here. I then carefully press them in the soft body so they will dry pretty solid. So in case you ever wanted to make a medieval morning star, you're welcome. When the body had fully dried, I applied a layer of PVA over it. Try not to touch the leaves if you can. Afterwards, I added the pencil shavings again for some extra texture. When everything had dried, I gave the bases and plants a coat of Tamiya Grey Primer. When the primer was dry, I applied a layer of this acrylic primer as well. This will fill in any spots you've missed with a spray can. I then decided where I wanted to place the bigger plants and drilled out a few holes using this pin vise. To bring out the cracks in the dried earth, I pre-shaded it using some black wash. When the wash had dried, I airbrushed a few yellows and browns to the soil. If you don't have an airbrush, I'd recommend using very diluted paint or some washes for this. I will now start to paint and weather the rock facings of the bases. To bring out the cracks and scratches of the base, I pre-shaded it using a mix of Reikland Flash Shade and Seraphim Sepia Wash. Afterwards, I removed some of the wash of the raised areas while it was still wet. I then applied a few reddish browns, yellows and greys to make the rocks a bit more interesting.
tops of the Joshua trees were painted using khaki brown, followed up with some shadows using camo medium brown. For the tree trunks I used a mix of saddle brown and US olive drab. When this was done, I applied a layer of Army Painters Soft Tone Ink over them. I gave the rocks a light dry brush using model color Dark Sand. At this stage I applied a few weathering pigments to the base. I couldn't find anything named Southwest American, so I had to settle for Africa and Europe instead. In order to make the spiky leaves of the Joshua trees, I used these Army Painter Swamp Tufts. What I have here are some dried sea foam twigs which I will use for the base. I gave them a coat of burnt umber here, but you could also leave them in a natural color. So what I have here is some green tea, which I will use on the twigs. I've also added some of this Woodland Scenics burnt grass to the mix. I applied some PVA glue to the tops and then dipped them in the tea mixture. What I have here are some natural dried flowers which I will use on top of the cacti. I applied a tiny bit of Warlord Purple to make them a bit more interesting. I then started painting the spiked cucumbers. I used USF Green and IDF Green to do this. I then gave them a small highlight using gold yellow. When this was done, I painted the spikes using German orange ochre. So time to decorate the cacti. I applied some of these small flowers to the tops using PVA glue. To make the flowers for the yucca plants, I will now use this dried lavender. I then applied some layers of random tan to make them a bit yellowish white. The medieval morning stars were painted khaki brown. I then base coated the leaves using camouflage green. Then highlighted them using some gold yellow. At this point, I added the flowers to the yucca plants using PVA glue. So, this is what we have so far. I'll 
will now try and decorate them some more. I then added the cactus and yucca to the spots I drilled out the holes earlier. I then painted up the skulls and bones I have here to use on the base as well. At this step I added the bones using some PVA glue. I divided them over four of the bases. To add some more color to the bases, I decided using these yellow flower tufts. When this was done, Add these small shrubs to some random spots on the bases. I then painted the edges of the bases using German Camo Black Brown. In order to seal in everything and remove some glossiness of the glue, I applied two layers of matte varnish to the bases. So all that's left now is to add your miniatures to the bases still working on some, so I thought of a suitable alternative in the meantime. So here we have an example of a true desert theme miniature and I think it really blends in with the scenery. So that'll wrap up this video, I really hope this looks like a southwest desert a little, although a bit fantasy themed of course. So I will leave you now with some pictures of the finished bases. As always, thank you for watching, stay tuned for more and take care.